welcome you all i am dr jahan working from rogani college of engineering and technology kanyagamari district so now i have discuss about ad hoc wireless sensor networks first of all routing protocols the routing protocol is a process to select suitable path for the data to travel from source to destination the process encounters several difficulties while selecting the route which depends upon type of network channel characteristics and the performance metrics the data sent by the the data sensed by the sensor node in a wireless sensor network is typically forwarded to the base station that connects the sensor network with the other networks maybe internet where the data is collected analyzed and some action is taken accordingly in very small sensor networks where the base stations and modes so close that they can communicate directly with each other then this is single hope communication but in most wireless sensor network application the coverage area is so large that requires thousands of nodes to be placed and these scenarios requires multi hop communication because most of the sensor nodes are so far from the sync node gateway so that they cannot communicate directly with the base station the single hop communication is also called direct communication and multi hop communication is uh, called direct communication in multi hop communication the sensor nodes not only produce and deliver their material but also serve as a path for other sensor node towards the base station in multi hop network an intermediate node as well as the source node has to decide to which neighboring node and incoming packet should be passed on so that it eventually reaches the destination for example node is sending to node do through number of intermediate nodes this act of passing on is called forwarding the simplest forwarding role is called floating floating is a common technique frequently used for path discovery and information disseminations in wired and wireless ad hoc networks floating uses a reactive approach whereby each node receiving a data or control packet sends the packet to all its neighbors after transmission a packet follows all possible path unless the network is disconnected the packet will eventually reach its destination furthermore as the network topology changes the packet transmitter follows the new routes to prevent a packet from circulating indefinitely in the network a hop count field is usually included in the packet the process of finding suitable path from source node to destination node is called routing and this is the primary responsibility of the network layer to forward the data packet each node maintain the routing table the table 3.1 shows two examples design challenges in wireless sensor networks there are some major design challenges in wireless sensor network due to lack of resources such as energy bandwidth and storage of processing while designing new routing protocols the following essentials should be fulfilled by network engineer energy efficiency wireless sensor networks are mostly battery power energy shortage is a major issues in these sensor networks especially in aggressive environments such as battlefield etc the performance of sensor node is adversely affected when battery is fallen below a predefined battery threshold level energy presents a main challenges for designers while designing sensor networks in wireless sensor network there are millions of nodes each node in this network has restricted energy resources due to a partial amount of power so the routing protocol should be energy efficient complexity the complexity of your routing protocol may affect the performance of the entire wireless network the reason behind is that we have inadequate hardware competence and we also face extreme energy limitations in wireless sensor network there are four modes of data transmission depending on the application in wireless sensor networks namely as query driven event driven and continuous type and hybrid type a node begins to transmit the data only 
when sin creates the query or as even occurs in query driven model an event driven model the data is sent out periodically in continuous transaction mode the performance of the routing protocol is a function of network size and transaction media so transaction media of good quality enhances the network performance directly sensor location another major challenge that is faced by wireless sensor network designers is to correctly locate to the sensor nodes most routing protocols use some localization technique to obtain knowledge concerning their location global positioning system gps receivers are used in some scenario so this follows a node to choose one path from among any many to relay its message to the sim the sir algorithm chooses a path with high estimated energy resources and provisions can be made to accommodate packets of different a weighted quality of service metric is used to handle prioritized packets which is computed as a product of priority level and delay the routing ensures that the same weighted quality of service metric is maintained thus higher priority packets take lower delay paths and lower priority packets have to use the path of greater delay For example, if node C generates a packet of priority three, it follows the longer path along tree B, and a packet of priority five, higher priority, will follow the shortest path along tree A, so that the priority delay quality of service metric is maintained. The SAR minimizes the average weighted quality of service metric over the lifetime of the network. The sync periodically triggers a metric update to reflect the changes. in available energy resources after some transmission multicasting in wireless sensor network multicast is the communication paradigm of one to many or many to many based on defined groups and constituted by members whose interest is to receive share the same information for a specific application a multicast group can also have one or more senders the multicast requirements for wireless sensor network is based on the application nature it can be useful in two main scenarios hence to obtain all information about patient one it is just necessary to receive the data content of g1 multicast in sourcely based multicast routing protocols an increase in the number of sources gives rise to proportional increases in the number of source trees this result in a significant increases in bandwidth consumption in the already bandwidth constrained network bandwidth efficient multicast routing protocol bandwidth efficient multicast routing protocol bemrp tries to find the nearest forwarding node rather than the shortest path between source and receiver hence it reduces the number of data packet transmission to maintain the multicast tree it uses the hot state approach that is to rejoin the multicast group a node transmits the required control packets only after the link breaks thus it avoids periodic transmission of control packets and hence bandwidth is saved to remove unwanted forwarding nodes route optimization is done which helps in further reducing the number of data packet transmission three maintenance phase to reduce the control overhead in b mrp tree configuration is done only when a link break is detected there are two schemes to recover from link failures broadcast multicast the same scheme in this scheme the upstream node is responsible for finding a new route to the previous downstream node this shown in figure figure 3.16 when receiver r3 moves from a a to b it gets isolated from the maintaining part of the tree the upstream node I3 now floats broadcast multicast packets with limited TTL. After receiving this packet, receiver R3 sends a reserved packet and joins the group again. Architecture of wireless sensor networks. Local rejoin scheme. In this scheme, the downstream node of the broken link tries to rejoin the multicast group by means to of limited packets. In Figure 3.17. when the link between receiver r3 and the substream node i3 fails then r3 floats the joint control packet with a certain ttl value 
when train nodes receive the join control packet they send back the replay packet after receiving the replay packet the downstream node r3 rejoins the group by sending a disser packet to the new upstream node i4 root optimization phase when the tree node or a receiver node comes within the transmission range of other tree nodes then unwanted tree nodes are pruned by sending the quit messages in figure 3.18 when receiver r3 comes with the transmission range of the intermediate node i2 it will receive multicast packet from node i2 earlier than from node i5 when node r3 receives a multicast packet from node i2 it sends reserve packet to node i2 to set up new route directly to node i2 and sends a quit packet to node i5 since node r3 is no more is downstream node node i5 sends a quit packet to node i4 node i4 sends a quit packet to node i3 and node i3 in turn sends a quit packet to node i2 thus unnecessary forwarding nodes are pruned this mechanism helps to reduce the number of data packet transmission this is bandwidth due to reduction in the number of data packet transmission easy to tree maintenance easy to join new node in the group disadvantages increase it increases the probability of path phase breaks which in turn gives rise to an increase in delay and reduction in the packet delivery ratio node spend more amount of time for reconnecting due to root repair so it leads delay in packet delivery mesh based protocols the mesh based protocol is used to overcome the limitations of tree based protocols such as scalability in number of sources and robustness the protocol is structured with higher connectivity is necessary that can connect multiple sources to their cam does not predefine such path along the mesh a router keeps a catch of the identifies of those packets it has forwarded recently and forwards a multicast packet received from a neighbor if the packet identifier is not in this catch the key difference between mesh and the tree structure is how data packets are accepted to be processed thank you